When Major General Imbriani's forces landed upon the shores of Hamburg, a year-long campaign of conquest commenced, fueled by the legendary Admiral Spaducci's invincible navy. Bavaria fell, and peace was negotiated within the Great Hall of the People, where the Italian nation was proclaimed, first by signature, and then by thunderous acclaim of victory. From the towering Alps, to the scorching sands of North Africa, from the Mediterranean's azure embrace to the vast Pacific, Solomon the Great's dreams stood realized at last. Yet in the wake of such glorious triumph, the future loomed uncertain and complex. Economic decline cast its ominous shadow, while the persistent calls for radical revolution echoed through the land. The delicate balance of global power teetered precariously, yet Italy stood ready, a bastion of resilience amidst the gathering storm. The chronicles of a nation's ascent are unfolding, where the price of greatness shall be paid in blood, sweat, and unwavering resolve. Under the heroic leadership of Emperor Donato Torres, the Italian nation has been birthed into the world. Unified under a common banner, Italy will surely shape the future of Europe and the world. Yes, young men, Italy owes you an undertaking which has merited the applause of the universe. You have conquered and you will conquer still, because you are prepared for the tactics to decide the fate of battles. To this wonderful page in our country's history, another more glorious still will be added, and the slave shall show at last his free brother as a sharpened sword forged from the links of his feathers. Viva Italia! In a pro-suffrage gesture, Ludovico Fortunato has released a positive endorsement for the left for a stalwart support of voting rights in Italy. We have elections in one day as well. Oh no! It'll be close. It'll be real close. The right got 48% of the vote, the left got 41%, communists got 6%, and the socialists got 4%. Technically, a coalition government with the communists, the socialists, and the left would actually rule if they could form that, which they probably wouldn't because the communists and the socialists hate the left in, in our country pretty much. It's really, I think it would be hard for our government or our king to have any grand ambitions right now, given two things. One, the political instability I just talked about. Like, let's, let's underline this again. This is a coalition government of 1.3 million people supporting it, ruling over a nation of 90 million people in that it's a very small, wealthy, powerful group of individuals tyrannically more or less ruling over a country, refusing any forms of major reform, and uh, with a very large group of very well-organized opposition forces. The liberals on the left actually don't hate us, ironically. Uh, the business interests, the bureaucrats, and the professional interests, they actually all kind of like us. They're just more liberal in this time period, right? They're, they're well-educated, and they're fairly wealthy in our country now, actually. They are content enough with the current state of affairs that they're not agitating extreme actions to make political change. They're, they're doing the old fashioned, you know, moderate socialist route, which is reform through proper channels, right? Trying to get actual power, which they won't with the current system, but they'll, they'll get more and more upset about that until we either have to institute proper voting laws or we get a civil war. The communists and the, and the socialists are different. They, they would be agitating for, for a civil war. The revolutionary socialists have now 3.4 million members, mostly laborers. The trade unionists have over a million members, mostly laborers. The reformist socialists, which is the more moderate, a little less than a million, and then a little bit, a little bit less than a million on the village interests as well. But no one wants to make a big move. The communists know that they can't. They don't have the numbers. They could try, but it'd be rough and they'd probably lose. The centrists and the liberals can't do anything because they'd either have to fight the government with all the soldiers in the power or they would have to fight probably also with the communists. So it's basically, this is like a three-way Mexican standoff between the conservatives, the liberals, and the communists right now in our, in our country. And no one wants to take the first shot. But we just unit unified our country so everyone kind of is getting along and willing to tolerate each other. It would be a very rough position. He's, he's fairly popular. He's liked. I think he'd probably be even more liked than this, given that he uni unified Italy. Right? I mean, that's a huge thing to have accomplished. He's only 22. Was it his primary ambition that he come up with this idea? Of course not. But he did oversee the war effort and he was in charge of the country when we achieved unification. For the Germans and for a lot of Europe, they would have basically just been trying to stop like another cataclysmic affair. Germany would have known how powerful they got when they unified. If you remember in the beginning of Victoria III for us, Germany did their unification play and became incredibly powerful of all the territory they took. 
Their current leader, their current chancellor is a pacifist, so we don't have to fear outright war with him in charge. The, the ruling government, the right social democrats underneath, what's his name? The SPD, interesting. Underneath uh, Peter uh, Lingman. We wouldn't have to probably fear war with him, but we would be aware that the second he gets ousted and if a more, more radical leader came to power in Germany, it could be looking at another major war again. So it is a very rough state of affairs between us. Because for Donato Torres, he's kind of threading the eye of the needle, right? He has to be able to keep his very conservative, rich, aristocratic supporters, which really allow him to sustain power, much like his father, Simon Torres. I mean, House Torres was brought back into power during the Civil War by the old school, very elitist aristocracy and capitalists. So we kind of owe them and we kind of rely on them for power. But he also is a moderate and knows that reform is needed. So we're kind of stuck. So I'd imagine for him, he and his current government would be looking to solve the economic issues before they go for like reforms. If we can't solve the economic issues, we will have to make some big reforms though. With Italy united under our rule, dignitaries and distance alike from our fractured predecessors have been drawn to our country. Ottavio Isola now seeks to make Italy his home. My fellow countrymen, through grace and fortune, our nation has been brought together on the auspices of Italy. Shall we let this unity of spirit lead to the death of thought? No, I say, no. If we seek to truly unite, we must accept that this is one great mass of people. There'll be an ocean of odd ideas. I know this to be true, for I am only one of these odd ideas. So please, my kindred spirits, will you let me in? We have no reason to invite troublemakers. Go back to Germany. The French communists announced its ambitions to extend its borders from Savoy to the Rhine. This puts Savoy in danger of invasion. The French haven't learned a bloody lesson since Bonaparte. I guess that technically does work in this context. If there's a single saber or demigun in their arsenal, they'll spoil for a fight. It's trying to appease. It's trying to appease them. France is fully communist now. The commune won the civil war. France is no longer a socialist state. They are now a council republic. California is an independent country of a democratic republic of socialist make right now with their state religion being Shinto. Because remember, it was the Yusugai originally who colonized California. It changed hands like 10 times though. Like the Spanish took it, the Hosokawa took it, the Indians took it for a little while, but now they're finally independent. And it, I guess it is a primarily Japanese state. Universal suffrage, parliamentary republic, state religion though, Shinto state religion, guaranteed liberties, right of assembly, regulatory bodies, they have OSHA, Holy crap. Women have property rights. This is probably one of the nicer places to live in this timeline, not gonna lie. It's a hybrid culture, say Goku American. The other major cultural groups are French, Dutch, Native American, Franco-Canadian, Andalusian Canadian, Norwegian Canadian, Galician, and they've got some Occitanians for some reason too. A Democratic Republic, Catholic Andalusian Canadian, Castel, Louisiana is a democratic republic. Primarily culture is Mexican. French commune actually owns land in the Midwest still for some reason. Gran Colombia, democratic republic. Brazil, democratic republic. Peru, democratic republic. La Plata, republic. Yeah, all America is currently a republic except for the Americans who are an empire. And the Americas in this timeline have been so interesting. I know the border glory is horrendous, but it has been role play wise so interesting. Japan joined the war. Japan's gonna fight with us against the Americans. I mean, the Japanese really like us, so I guess they would have been persuaded to join against the Americans jointly. Not what I wanted or expected, but we are about to go into another really large war here with America. We have to fully, cons we have to fully mobilize now. Push hard, push fast, win the war. Us, the Japanese in Ukraine against the Americans and the Ukrainian revolutionary socialist uh, or liberal socialist state. Just almost like a coalition. Here we go. We have a lot of troops in currently the uh, Ukrainian region. I think around 300,000 we've sent there so far. Our military is way stronger than the rebels, but the American military, if I remember correctly, is actually as good as us. Send Smaducci off the coast of Washington. There we go. First naval battle of the war. Yeah, their navy is as strong as ours. Just a heads up, folks. The American navy is very advanced. We're going to win this, but we got a very good... Uh, engagement with them here. 
We sold Admiral too. They're trying to naval invade us. Oh, fuck. They're going to land. We are winning in Ukraine, which is what matters. That's what will get the peace in this war. But I think the Americans are about to land somewhere in the Mediterranean from the looks of things. Our debt is out horrendous. We need to be trying to get out of it, but we got stuck in another war here. They are going to try and land on southern Italy, but it looks like they may not succeed, even though we don't have a general there. I have never seen that before. The Battle of Kiev. Somehow 500,000 of our soldiers met together to fight in Kiev. Whoa, that's a big battle. I have transferred to the Holstein. I have given us the land in Greece. And then in the post uh, peace deal treaty, I have given us 15 million and I took it away from the Americans. Britain and Germany are still in a war right now that started separately from the war that we were fighting in the World War. John French is fighting it. Nice. Despite not enjoying full rights under Italian law, some wealthier Japanese people have begun moving into neighborhoods and frequenting establishments that would be normally excluded from. Well, given that we are very close with the Japanese and don't want to piss them off in our history with them, um, we will we will allow them to do so. The fascist party apparently has appeared, by the way. There's a hundred thousand fascist supporters in our country. Most of our fascists are capitalists and engineers. Three thousand of our academics are fascists. Over a thousand of our officers and our military are fascists. They have earned their success with all it entails. Our deficit is down to a hundred thousand. Oh boy, here we go. I told you we could outscale the debt and we're actually doing it. All it took, get ready, drum roll, was lots of oil. Turns out you can blow up your economy and not care about debt if you transition to an oil economy. So as I predicted, we're literally just going to do an America here. The, the liberals are demanding we enact regulatory bodies. They want OSHA. That, that'll be a big civil war. I'm not opposed to us fighting this, actually. This has been coming for a while. We could try and do another reform to distract them, but I don't know if that'd be effective. The rise of communism in powerful countries like Germany has led to a talking on the left election campaign, warning against a similar homegrown movement. It's no secret that the communists seek an international revolution. The German regime may topple any day now, but that does not mean we can take the threat of another government falling seriously. Or if they call themselves democratic socialists, syndicalists, or any other products of leftist factionalism, they are a threat to Italian values. Damn right. The sorry streets will not turn red with blood or otherwise. The left won the election. The left got 50% of the vote. The right got 41%. The communists got five and the socialists got four and a half. That means that role play wise, we do need to put them in power. End of an era. They've got a lot of actually like moderates in there. The business interests also like are in the, the, the left now too. So it's not like as radical as you think it is, but it is a big change. Well, we'll have a legitimate government. That's good. Donato Torres is a moderate. He's not radical enough to intervene to stop this from happening either. It's led by the business interests to be fair though. Giovanni Palmieri, wow, it is that guy literally, is in charge. He's a pious firebrand swimmer. The other big leader in the coalition will be Augusto Antonelli who is a cautious political operator. The two largest groups with enough political clout will be those. The bureaucrats have a fair bit too, under Alessandro Di Boschetti. Yeah, no, this means we actually will try and make some law changes now. We'll look at the interests of the business interests and the liberals for what laws they want to go for first. Mercantilism, uh, allowing child labor and free trade. What do the liberals want? Private schools, getting rid of the health system, poor laws, removing migration controls, Right of assembly, private health insurance, protected speech, property to women. They want women in the workplace, actually. They want full on women's suffrage. They also want free trade. We may go free trade because both of the two big parties of the left want free trade. Given the amount of trade that we have done historically with so many countries, including ones that we are actually probably ideologically very opposed to. If you remember, we've been trading on and off with our enemies, including Germany, Britain, the French, etc. for quite a while. I think it does make sense for us to go free trade at this point, especially given our, our wealth and trade focus in EU4 and the, the power of the burgers. We really have a culture of real politic when it comes to like trade activities and wealth, right? So our first big reform in quite a long time. The, the last major reform at a level like this we probably did was under Simon Torres when we did our land reforms, right? The land reforms were a big move away from the aristocratic feudal system or the remnants of it. Do you like modern land ownership? We are. All it took was underfunding our entire bureaucratic apparatus and uh, maxing taxes out on all of our people. But we are technically in the green right now for the first time in quite a while. The Japanese shogunate wishes to have a trade agreement with us. Absolutely. They've become a lot more friendly with us in recent years. Oh, it's a child on the throne. Shogun Mirasuke Yusugai. It's been suggested that we establish a cross-border telephone exchange with a French commune. <laughs> 
Why would we want to talk to communists? The other big thing we need to do is to reduce our radicals. We're up to 30 million radicals. A third of our country basically is outright protesting or very angry at our government. The only way we can really do that at this point is to lower our, our taxes. But that would literally cripple the economy if we did that. So we're kind of stuck again. An order from the business interests have gone on speaking to her across the nation, denouncing protectionism and praising the value of free trade. Given that our ruling party is literally the business interest there at the helm of things, I think they, they would definitely take this as an opportunity to become more popular. So I got to say, forming Italy has been very good for our country as a whole, but we're going to be struggling basically, I think, almost until Hoi 4 to get our country back under control. It's been suggested that by establishing a cross-border telephone exchange with the Chagatai, we can improve relations. Now, see, this is reasonable. Well, we're not going to open telephone line with communists, but a telephone line with the Chagatai is actually useful. So we're absolutely going to do that. We have free trade. The free exchange of goods must not be impeded, as trade is for the benefit of all. I like how both the right government, which is in charge for a while, and now the left government are both completely struggling to try and stabilize the economy. We're up to 83 million in debt again, too. The aristocratic interests are on the precipice of revolt, threatening to join the revolution in case certain demands are not met. The aristocrats are going to side with the communists in their civil war for workers' rights. Ridiculous. They have no right to ask for anything. They're just going to try to abuse the situation. We're not having it. So if they want to go side with the communists, which they don't, that's up to them. That being said, we are going to go ahead and go for reforms to uh, make the communists not start a civil war. We're going to attempt to enact regulatory bodies. Government institutions have been created to regulate the excesses of employers. So it'll be basically like early Italian OSHA is what we're making right now. We have a new agitator in our government. Gabriel Di Annunzio, a literary ambitious hedonist chess master, is advocating for state fascism in an ethno state. We can't exile him for over a year as well, so he's going to make fascism way more popular. As if we did not have enough problems, we now have a very popular, very charismatic uh, fascist agitator in our country. If we get all these government administrations built, it'll increase our taxation capacity enough that we should bring it in close, hopefully enough to almost get rid of the deficit. The excess in bureaucracy will also allow us to potentially implement some institutional reforms, particularly uh, increasing our home affairs and law enforcement, which will allow us to deal with the radicals a bit better. And if we can get all that done, we should be in somewhat stable shape here. Seeking so support amongst their peers, Gabriel Di Annunzio, that is the fascist in residence, has organized a boycott against the regulatory body's law. On the day to pass the law, there was only one empty seat, Gabriel Di Annunzio. So I guess he's a member of parliament as well. We have our first fascist parliament member. Inform the printers about this blunder. Mexico wants a trade agreement. Like I said, we're very real politic when it comes to trade, even though they are quite liberal. Since they asked, I think we will accept this. Sailors in the Imperial Italian Navy have started making cocktails with the alcohol used as fuel in torpedoes. Nicknamed Torpedo Juice. The fuck is our Navy doing? Sure, why not? What can go wrong? A current radical liberal thought is spreading internationally and has recently reached Italy. Uh, Italy. Why should I concern myself with the freedom of the press? All they print is rubbish. We wouldn't really like the press. I mean, the king wouldn't like the press. The liberal government wouldn't really like the press given like, how much he probably supports like, you know, communist publications and things like that. So well, let's actually support that. Torpedo juice is American slang for an alcoholic beverage first mixed in World War II made from pineapple juice and 180 proof grain alcohol fuel used in the United States Navy torpedo motors. Various poisonous additives were mixed into the fuel alcohol by Navy authorities to render the alcohol undrinkable and various methods were employed by the U.S. sailors to separate the alcohol from the poison. Aside from the expected alcohol intoxication and subsequent hangover, the effects of drinking torpedo juice sometimes include mild to severe reactions to the poison. The standard recipe for uh, torpedo juice is two parts ethyl alcohol and three parts pineapple juice. The communists are threatening a civil war yet again if they do not have poor laws enacted. At a certain point, you can't keep negotiating with groups like this, honestly. This is getting out of hand. The Liberal Party is discussing what major reform it wants to go for next, given that they are clearly very needed to get rid of as many radicals, which among other things is just continuing to destroy our economy here. Yep, American Civil War, another one. The, oh God. The American Council Republic, Revolutionary American Council Republic is revolting against the ruling American Constitutional Empire. They have allies though. 
They have a lot of allies, so the revolutionary state will not win unless Germany intervenes. A committee of publishers associated with the anarchists that produce incendiary pamphlets has been brought before the courts. This agglomeration of the dangerous men must be stopped. We must take from them the means of provoking the mob and reduce these arrogant fools to their true propositions, to their real role as little more than obscure conspirators and criminals. Let's put them on trial. Women's suffrage is actually fairly popular in our country. It's just that all the people pushing for it are communist. The left have gained even more in the voting. They're now up to basically 50% of the vote. So the left is still very much in control of our government. Gabriel D'Annunzio, that is again, the fascist agitator. Attendance at a bourgeoisie funded raising banquet in Caesarea has led to an uptick in funds promoting property women. As the organizer at the end of the table stood to give a toast to the clear wisdom of reform, he could not help but think of how closely the sound of his fork on the glass represented a coin falling to a bank. So are the fascists for women's rights? They just don't have opinions on women's rights at all, apparently. So I, I guess that the current fascist leader is pushing for women property rights. Sure. He's become a grifter as well, apparently. We're in such a weird place now again as well, where the liberals have made such minor reforms, the communists continue to hate the government because it's not enough, and the right hates the government because they're making reforms. So yet again, we're stuck with a ruling party who's unpopular. Oh, Donato Torres has a new trait. He is cruel. Donato Torres is known for being cruel. Well, that's going to change how we deal with all these uh, insurrection events. A group of petitioners representing the professional interests led by Fabio Torlonia have carried out a march on the Emperor's currently vacant residence in Cesare. They are refusing to leave the residence until the Emperor agrees to meet with them. We're going to start firing on the crowd. That made the revolutionaries much more angry. The Voice of Heraclion, a popular newspaper read by the professional interests across Italy, has published an article on Gabriel D'Annunzio advocating for the inaction of propertied women. I, I love this timeline where it is the really loud, angry fascist who's currently pushing the, the most for women's property rights. Alrighty. Whilst Emperor Donato Torres was riding in a carriage between Cesare and one of his country estates, a revolutionary threw himself under the carriage of a live grenade, killing the Emperor. Fuck, they took him out! Two of our last Emperors have died from communist assassins. Jesus. We will have our vengeance. The 10-year-old wrathful son of Donato on the throne. Wow. I can't believe two of our last emperors were killed by assassination, though. That's crazy. I mean, it was a fairly common thing in this time period. A recently published paper on the hysteria of women in women, oh boy, has gained traction in the medical community. The paper has been used as anti-women's rights propaganda against the property women law. There's no real evidence that hysteria is any more prevalent in women than it is in men, but for some reason, we are the ones who keep getting diagnosed with it. Let's go ahead and release a comprehensive rebuttal of Hysteria. We're going to do Italian uh, Victorian era Mythbusters for Hysteria. There's a war we are getting called in. Oh, God, this is not the time for a war of Britain and Germany. Are you kidding me? Guys, what the fuck are we doing? Egypt just started a war with Germany? And Britain, the successes that Castella Plata have seen with the policies of property women have been noticed by supporters of Di Annunzio, point towards it being an example of an ideal government. Absolutely. Oh God, we're gonna actually have to fight the Germans here. I am going to levy a very extreme tax. We're gonna we're gonna make a service tax. That'll lower our standard of living by quite a lot, and we'll really piss off the communists. I'm gonna do defense in depth. So we just need a fucking hold. I'm going to send a really large force to push in Africa. Is our Navy ready to go? We don't have dreadnoughts yet. We really should have gotten those by now. How much longer? Over a year. I'm in the middle of the war. The far left party has formed. Oh, no. The left split into the left and the far left now. So we don't have a legitimate government anymore because the left just broke apart. Our ruling coalition just broke in half. We've got the Americans. You remember that country that did nothing in the Great War? We've got them on our side. We're really going to carry this war for the fucking Egyptians. What if we just like give them what they want? What if we just give the British like all of Egypt? After raiding army barracks in Campania, the trade unionists under Michel Vernazza have begun turning their weapons against the government. 
We have another radical agitator. We have a trade unionist agitator and a fascist agitator now. This is our reckoning. We've had way too long of a good period here. The Americans are losing to the Germans, but the American military is better. We got all of our soldiers to the front now. I think we have. Our military is also technically better. With these reinforcements, we may be able to hold. If we get a little bit of a surplus going here after we finish these uh, governmental administrations, I'm gonna try and get us to build a fort line if we still hold the Alps too at that point. We have the fort line in Tuscany, which we may get pushed back to. Embriani, is he still a, a general? He is. We gotta hold. We gotta hold this front before we try any offensive moves here. Because if they break past the Alp and they sweep through Italy, this war is over. Our economy is collapsing too. With revolutionary sentiment boiling over across the nation, Emperor Ferdinando Torres advisors and the radical liberals have recommended a, patch you, uh, a package of reforms to appease the revolutionaries. We have to. With, with a war like this, we have to give concessions. We're going to try and pass the poor laws to stop the civil war. We have almost 500,000 men in the Alps right now, and the Germans have 600,000. Fuck, they took Lombardy. We, I guess we negotiated a peace with the Germans. We, we didn't actually have anything. Lombardy has been devastated, but the Germans left the war after taking war reparations from the Egyptians, of all things. I guess they just wanted to show us that they could beat us, and they did. They destroyed our army there. We still have to fight the British, though, which is actually kind of doable. We're not letting them walk out of this without seriously fucking them over, so. We'll send Embriani to Peru, and Garcia, we're going to land in Britain again. We're not ready for that, though. Let's let's hit uh, Brittany first. Oh, German Civil War! German Civil War, let's go! Since they went radical, Germany's slowly becoming more and more moderate, and I guess the hardcore communists got fed up with it. Hardcore Council Republic communist radicals have just revolted against the ruling radical liberal republic in charge of Germany now. And we did land in Brittany. Well, the 20s and the 30s are not disappointing with how chaotic they are. I can say that. We blitz Brittany and Normandy. Let's let's try and land in Britain again. The Bulgarians are revolting. We are going to form a new government made up of what remains of the left and the liberals, the moderate liberals. And we're going to form a coalition government with the far with the right party again, with the right. The conservatives, the church and the military will form a new government here, which will actually give us a stable ruling party for once. Man, our politics over the last two decades is just insane. Hawaii has succeeded as well. Scandinavia just offered us an alliance, an absolute empire, and a one with a similar ruling government as ours. We'll accept that. She just won her civil war as well, Empress Sophia. We landed? Wait, the Americans landed? Fuck, they beat us to Britain. We got there late. That's just embarrassing. That is, that is a real national embarrassment right there. Even if we win this war, we've, we've lost this war. God, they are strong too. Look at that. <laughs> They're doing a recast order uh, declare declaration. Basically, we've grown too powerful in recent times for their liking, and they're doing us a cut down to size play on us. So they're trying to destroy our power right now. They saw us just land in Britain and we're like, nope, that is not happening. So they are declaring war. Let's start calling in some favors. We might be able to take them down Thanos style here if we can get enough people on our side though. This could be the moment we like just go all in and try and break the Chagatai. 5,000 battalions if they can script. We are not setting up telephone lines with the communist Germans. Absolutely not. Yeah, this is basically just like a, a very chaotic world war at this point. Every country that's not in a major war is in a civil war. I don't even know what to call this. It doesn't fit a world war. The hard times. We've surrounded the British army, holding out yet again just north of London. Is that England? Uh, what's his name again? I mainly want economic concessions out of them here, though. That's the big thing. We need money. We need we need to just loot every every gold and silver item we find in the British Isles. There we go. Gregory Palliser is trying to hold out, but he's not going to. And we have the revolution in Hawaii. We need to deal with as well. We're going to land Costa in Hawaii and put down that revolt, too. The Chagatai are going to try and cut uh, Britain down to size, too. Japan is going to fight with the Chagatai against the British. How will that work if we get in a war against the Chagatai with the Japanese as well? 
It's like a four-way war in the Pacific, I guess. We have a big surplus again. At least we're making money now. We can offer Malacca or Malaya to the Americans and they'll join the war. The war is over. We defeated the British. 